Hello and welcome to Across the Blue Sea. I'm Katherine Bowers and we are here today at Mother's Market and Kitchen in Costa Mesa, California to find out all about the delicious Domacha ancient Japanese green tea. Stepping out on a distant shore Makes me wanna go more and more Making new friends, trying new things We'll pack our bags, we're up for everything And we'll go Traveling, traveling together Traveling, traveling, traveling together I guess our first question is, what actually is matcha? Everyone asks, what's matcha? Maybe 20% of the population, especially along the West Coast, know what matcha is. But matcha is Japanese powdered green tea. Ma comes from the word matsu, meaning ground or rubbed, and cha, of course, is tea. Do means the way or journey, so mm -hmm. this is the way or journey of powdered tea. Now, Domacha has many wonderful products. We've got a whole row sure. of good things to choose from. Can you tell us about the products? Yes, well, this is our top seller, the organic ceremonial grade matcha. In matcha, there's different grades, just like fine wines. So we have the ceremonial matcha, and we've got a second harvest matcha. This one is a little more expensive. It's about, you know, a dollar a serving. This one's about 50 cents a serving. And uh, the organic matcha grows in Kyoto, where matcha originated about 800 years ago. We also have uh, organic matcha in Kagoshima, Japan. Um, this is, uh, it gives you a nice lift of energy, about three to four hours. Have you, you drink matcha yourself, so you've I noticed do. that. I love matcha. I drink it every day. Yeah? Which one do you drink? Um, I drink both the organic. Well, I, I like them all. Do you? Okay. But I tend to drink the organic green. This the ceremonial grade or the ceremonial. second harvest? Um, I've had both. Oh, okay. All right. And so, I like both. Yeah. Yeah. The ceremonial has a smoother profile, taste profile. So people often use that in a traditional matcha with hot water, just like we're going to see in, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the second harvest matcha, because it's a little more astringent flavor, and a little more bitter, uh, people put that into a latte or frappe kind of drink, or a blended drink, like a protein drink. I see. Now the other thing that, that you have are the, uh, what I call the traveler's tea packets now, but you yes. have the single serving matcha. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that for us okay, right here. Sure. Um, so that comes as single serving, right? Yeah, and that is uh, one and a half grams of matcha, uh, about three quarters of a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, most people use about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon per serving. Mm -hmm. And we recommend starting out with a half teaspoon. So this is great for traveling, uh, taking to the gym, uh, going to your office, you just want to take a couple packets for the day. You know, pop it into your water right. bottle, shake it's it up. It's a single packet and a can full of them, and then you that's take right. it with you. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a, When uh, I travel, I take them everywhere. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is caffeine. Um, coffee obviously has a lot of caffeine. It takes you really high up, right, depending right. on what you're drinking. Right. What about caffeine and green tea? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the monks used to use it to meditate with, which is how matcha really uh, got established in the Japanese society. So you can't imagine monks drinking coffee and meditating. Uh, so matcha does have caffeine, but because of the L-theanine, which is an amino acid, makes us feel calm, uh, and the high antioxidant level, it really ameliorates any negative effects that, uh, that the caffeine might have. In addition, coffee is about 80 to 120 milligrams per gram of, of coffee, and this is about 30 milligrams per gram. So Kyoto is at a certain elevation, and it's a, the right kind of environment for growing the perfect green tea bush? Yeah, it's, uh, they have these hills, and we have pictures on our website of the beautiful hills, and then two rivers meet at that point, so that that mist condition and everything, mm -hmm. it's just the perfect growing condition for, for matcha and, and tea, any kind of tea. All tea comes from the Camellia sinensis, so whether it's white, black, oolong, or, or green, and, and matcha is just uh, different because of the way it's harvested and processed. Now, one of the things that's just happened, and it, it's just such a horrible tragedy, and we're all heartbroken about yes. what's happening in Japan. Yeah. Domacha is Japanese green tea. Yes. How is this going to impact Domacha, and how, how are you dealing with it as a company? Yeah, well, our, we're devastated with just, uh, you know, our concern over the Japanese nation, you know. Um, we, uh, our matcha is grown in Kyoto, uh, which is south of uh, the Miyagi uh, prefecture where the earthquake happened. Uh, it's about four hours south. And then uh, our organic matcha, lots of our organic matcha these days is coming from, actually from Kagoshima. And Kagoshima is about the same distance from Miyagi to Kagoshima as Seattle to Anaheim. 
Uh, so it's about 900 to 1,000 miles. It's southwest of Miyake Prefecture, and the, uh, the prevailing winds are more easterly. So we would have more concern probably over here on the west coast. About what's happening with the wind well, and yes, possible radiation. That's right, than you would in, in southwestern mm -hmm. Japan. So. Uh, and now, um, shipping-wise, is it going to impact you getting domacha in and out of Japan? Well, that's a good question, because I asked that a couple of days ago to our Japanese partners, mm -hmm. and, and they were all okay, uh, and their families are okay, thank God. Yes. Um, and they said, because we ship out of Nagoya, uh, it's not an issue. Uh, we fly out of Nagoya instead of Narita, which was closed down for a little while. So that's not an issue. And our 2010 matcha is all vacuum-sealed and kept in a zero-degree warehouse right now. And will be for the next year, so you know, so we're fine, and, and we will do testing, absolutely for 2011 if it's an issue. Right. So it's yet to be seen what the long-term effects will be, and obviously uh, Japan's going to try to recover quickly. But right now, it's it's very much shell shock kind of situation. Everybody's in shock and concern, but it's that's right. um, well, they've, you know, they've had many challenges over their thousands of years history, and. I'm sure they'll get through this one too, but you know, we could help them in some ways. Yes, and I think that's what's really great. I mean, people can support the Japanese by drinking domacha Absolutely. tea Absolutely. as well as getting healthier while they drink it. Yeah, and I, I think I would like to put some sort of, um, you know, discount, or not discount, but have some of the proceeds if we can go back, you know, to, uh, to help some the people aid. of Japan. Yeah, because there's a number of aid organizations that you, you can donate money to. Yeah. I think we might put that into place. Well, um, we're going to go on from here and see um, how it's made. Yes. And we have a tea master with us Leah to help Tirana. us. That's Leah very exciting. Yeah. is here. So we're going to go to another part of the store and see how the tea is made. Well, we are here now to have a demonstration on how to make the delicious domacha tea with Leah Terada, the event marketer for domacha. And Leah, can you show us some of the things that you're going to use and then explain to us how to make this tea? Yes. So what we have here is a tea bowl and it's called a chawan and we use this to make uh, the domacha tea. Have here a chasen, it's a bamboo whisk and it's an implement used to make the um, domacha tea. This so is I'll, also very handy, just a, yes. it has a nice little stand it's to a keep a little it. bamboo whisk stand and it keeps it nice and clean. Okay. So what we'll do is we will take about half a teaspoon for serving and I usually do about two scoops right in there. And then you take the hot water And that's about a serving right there. So you take the chasen and you mix the green tea powder with the water. And I know that there are different ways of doing it. You can do it in a zigzag shape. And the idea is to get a nice foam going. Now I notice you just put in a little water. You didn't fill the whole bowl right away. You just put in a small amount, like about right. a quarter cup or so. Because this is typically what would be one serving for a person. So now you see how when you go whip this up, you have that nice foam. Oh, it's beautiful. It's all foamy and very, very green. Yes. I think this is what you call go green. Go green. <laughs> That's right, right? And then this is your... Domacha. Beautiful tea. domacha. Now, there are a lot of recipes for domacha as well. Yes. But this is how you make the tea this just is how right. It's right. And then some of the other variations include things like soy latte or almond milk or um, sometimes a little spice like a chai sort of style. There are so many great recipes with domacha. So here we go. All right, wonderful. And uh, should we try a little sip? Yes, to your health. To your health.